Oh hey, look at this, a progressive gaming website talking about a Warhammer 40k video game. I wonder if it'll be filled with willful misinterpretations or simply just made up nonsense about the 40k universe in order to push the writer's own barely disguised political agenda. No, in fact, I, I don't wonder. I am being facetious. I know for a fact that is exactly what's going to happen because these people could never talk about a video game in and of itself. <laughs> but more importantly than just that, well, that would be amusing enough in and of itself, this is about a Warhammer 40k rogue trader whose developers, developers say they would love to have more LGB2 romance options, but they won't because of their bigotry. Of course, not foolish, obviously. What other possible reasons could there be? Well, they do actually explain their reasons and their rationale, but... Well, the author doesn't accept any of that. And the wider message of today's video will be, um, remember game developers, this is a point that has been stressed repeatedly, but it is never good enough. And the progressive only has one ally. Himself. As it turns out. So, this is called talking about the uh, CRPG Rogue Trader again, which is a pretty damn interesting game made by Owlcat, a studio which I actually quite like. I know a fair few people have accused them of being woke, but I actually think they aren't. In fact, I do believe that they are one of very few studios in this day and age that are actually genuinely neutral, without having really adopted either position on any matter, which I consider to be actually genuinely laudable, but that does mean that they open for a little bit of critique, of course. However, when I mention that gay men or players role-playing a gay male inquisitor are disappointed that uh, there's only one unpalatable romance option available to them, the only possibility is an alien terrorist who you may not even recruit, the mood in the Discord call got immediately frosty. That's because they realized, oh, hold on, we're about to be under attack. Correct. As then, uh, executive uh, game producer Anatoly Shestov jumps in, audibly defensive, as if to shut down any perceived accusations of homophobia from rogue traders' gay fans. Perceived? Oh, there's, there's no perceiving here. You were about to attack them for this. In fact, you will continue to attack them for this in this article. See, this is why I think that Alcat genuinely are on the, the medium neutral point here. Because they are able from an outsider's perspective to go like, Oh, we're about to be assaulted and make the necessary defensive actions. <laughs> Which I do find rather amusing as they go on to explain that they've actually locked out quite a few romances in Rogue Trader for reasons of lore and the character backgrounds. Now, personally, I sort of kind of disagree with this because my opinion actually is, well, pro the gamer in this case, in that you should be able to romance pretty much any character you so choose, but it should be uh, significantly more difficult in certain cases. For example, Argenta, okay, fair enough, you cannot uh, seduce the pure sister of battle, all right. I can play Chaos in this game though, <laughs> can't I? See, there was a wonderful little touch in uh, Wrath of the Righteous where there is a demonette, Arashuele, Arashule, something along those lines, um, who realized that she's a bad girl and wants to become a better girl. Fantastic. And you can lead her down this line of redemption, or you can corrupt her <laughs> all the way back to being a demon again and still romance her. It is a uh, rather... <laughs> Rather spicy romance route, to put it mildly, but the option is there, and I kind of like for there to be one here as well. Anywho, enough waffling around the porridge. Alcat's Games is intended on making the most immersive simulation of life in the 41st millennium. I don't know about that, but let's not nitpick on every point, shall we? Rogue traders live on the edge of the Imperium, skirting Imperial laws thanks to the warrant of trade. No, the warrant of trade is a legal instrument. It simply gives them more powers in the law. It's like making them super... F Never mind. Let's not nitpick everything that they carry in their cathedral-esque spacecraft. Every spacecraft in 40k is cathedral-esque. At least of the 40k and, uh, you know, humanity of man. Humanity... Imperium of Rhine, Jesus. They're the perfect protagonist for a CRPG, now that we can agree on. Seeing as they are usually more regular human than genetic super soldier, are joined by a cast of weirdos from across the universe, and abide by their own wavering morality more than a sense of loyalty to the God Emperor of Mankind. 
Uh, well, no, they're, they're, not, they're not above the worship of the god emperor. They're not above imperial law in that respect. In fact, a lot of them are actually zealous imperial... Well, never mind. Again, if we pick out every point of um, lore inconsistencies in this article, we will be here forever. Alcat, however, wants to put a leash on that freedom to protect the Lord and direct players to engage with one of 40,000 rogue traders' narrative on a more substantive level. Absolutely perfect. They go on about how that is related to equipment, but we'll skip over that one. This also means that the romance options are limited, much to the chagrin of Alpha and Beta players. Magos exporter Pascal Hunneman, nobody cares about him, you cannot shack up with him, and you cannot bang the sexy warrior nun either, which I do believe in fact to be an absolute tragedy, but hopefully a chaos playthrough will solve this unfortunate problem. Implementing the romances with the companions was the challenge of itself, was the challenge of it, yeah, I read that correctly, because we need to respect the law and the restrictions that are in the law. And on the other hand, we wanted to make it exciting for the player, explains narrative leader Olga Kellner. Again, it comes back to the law, but it's also about being true to the character Owlcat has created. Now, I will yet again argue that there is actually nothing within the, the code of conduct of the uh, Sisters of Battle that prevents them from having relationships. They are not the brides of the Emperor in the older sense, as in the... Um the apostasy sense, when they were originally actually named the Brides of the Emperor, but details, details. Sometimes it will for law reason, Kelman continues. Sometimes it's for character consistency, because for example, Seneschal Adelblard, Adelblard, there are some things in the character's background in his relationship with your predecessor, and in a relationship with his dead wife, because he is a widower, that it just didn't feel right to implement romance, because it would go against the narrative. It wouldn't be true to his character. Now this is one argument that even I, the you should be able to bang everyone, can agree with. Adelblard was clearly extremely appreciative, shall we say, of your rogue trader predecessor. He had a wife whom he loved dearly. He has several children. Romancing him would probably be difficult, but I still think you should be able to do it. Maybe by working on the, uh, the respect he had for the predecessor, for example. Becoming more like her. Rekindling that romance in a sort of roundabout way, but I get the argument. However, when I mention that gay men or players role playing Game Meal Inquisitor is disappointed, and then we get to the funny part, then the mood in the Discord call got frosty. Straight players, male or female, already have at least three options. Whoopty goddamn do. While lesbian players suffer a similar issue to gay men with just one bisexual character to romance. Why? Bisexual? Doesn't mean that you could romance them with a gay character as well? Or are, or are you of the opinion that gay and bisexual are two different camps and never shall the two meet? Because in, in that case, wouldn't you have two? Hmm. An incredibly generic banker. At least she's not a terrorist. No, there are two. Oh, oh well, I guess she's not a terrorist. The other one's there. Okay, fair enough. No sooner than I have asked whether Owlcat would implement more LGBT plus drama into full game executive producer, Anatoly Shestov got defensive. As he well should. Because this is once more why I think that a little bit of the outside, they're not in either camp. Because if they were in a progressive camp, they would have a progressive rationale for why they didn't. Or, in fact, they probably just would have implemented more LGBTQ or romance options. If they were on the right wing camp, they'd go, um, we didn't actually care about that because you see the vast majority of our players are straight. But seeing as they're on the outside, they're going, up. Uh, I recognize that an attack is coming, but I don't have really an ideological reason for why, so I'm going to rely on a logical reason for why. Which is going to work out wonderfully, I'm sure. It's not about LGBTQ plus options, he says. It's about the narrative of the whole picture that we envision and we want to elaborate on. We didn't see the romance as an option to point out any such aspect. We see any romance as our way to elaborate on the stories in the most personal way. And that is exactly how they should be. Romances should be a way to build out the character rather than merely as a, a sort of thirst trap. After all, it's not like you're going to be seeing any pornographic content in a game like this anyway, so why bother? Even then, I do prefer to have more options wherever possible because it does add depth to the characters as well. Again, having the uh, Adelblad, for example, the widower, turning him around to fall in love with another rogue trader could be a very interesting character development phase in its own right, in my opinion. But then again, having him actually remain true to his dead wife shows equal character, so... Eh -eh. 
For us internally, it is not the story of the gay person or a straight person. It is a story of a seneschal who lost his wife or the story of a blood-soaked sociopath who can challenge his own thoughts. Or the story of an entire species who can change its own perspective of the world through you. These are the things that we want to tell and we pick the best options to highlight the strengths of the story. Both in the models, in the portraits, in the voiceovers, in all of the aspects. In other words, we are doing this because it is blatantly a better story. An excuse that will of course fall on deaf ears. It is not like we have a quota. No, we want to tell a strong story. We found the best possible in a given budget and time frame options to live it. And that is how we ended with the given set of romances. Of course, any person on the team would love to have tens of additional romances, but at the same time, any person on the team would love to have, for example, additional companions like Crute. Everyone wants to have a Crute mercenary. No, Crutes are overrated. Screw up. Shester goes on to explain the process of game development, but at that point, the author blanked out completely, as he was faced with things like logic, budgetary restraints, and issues with money, and not being able to afford all of the LGBTQ representation that the progressive would no doubt find lacking regardless. Alcat prioritized the most immersive features of naval combat and outer space. I don't know if they're very really impressive, to be fair, I could have done without that. A very impressive system to have built from scratch, made the cut instead of more romances. You know what? I might even disagree with that one because I played the naval combat and it was... <laughs> I'm sorry, Alcat. I know you want mass combat in all of your games and I sympathize. I add them into every roleplay I do as well, but I usually suck. I usually suck too. It's fine. It's just the reality of the matter, it appears. I can't help but feel that he is missing the point, and there we come to the gravy of it, of course. Players have no problems with the fact that part members have their set sexualities. If anything, it makes more sense and keeps them true to their characters. Players take umbrage with the fact that the already limited options are even further limited. So, we have no problems with set sexualities, we just have a problem with se set sexualities that aren't in our favour. Yes. Yes, you are retarded. You are actually a genuine little bit retarded. And you will actually answer your own question as to why that is the case. The We See Past Sexuality line doesn't hold up and straight players are afforded the luxury to pick and choose who they romance and gay players are not. Well, when IRL Warhammer communities are so dominated by straight men, and there you have it. The reason and the rationale. They are on a tight budget, they need to ship and sell the game, and they need it to appeal to people who might actually purchase the game, rather than the, mm, uh, the, the fans, heavy quotation marks, of which there are probably 15 or so, which get interested not in the ability to romance a gay character, but rather the political implications of being able to romance a gay character. As you say here, the Warhammer community is dominated by straight men, and so it obviously makes sense to cater to... straight men. Correct. Accurate. Thank you for realizing. It would have been refreshing for LGBT players to see themselves better represented in the 40k universe in a game that promised to offer more role-playing opportunities than a Games Workshop affiliated title to date. I don't know about that, they've released actual role-playing codexes, but again, if we point out everything the author gets wrong, we will be here till Christmas, will we not? So. No, it would not be refreshing to shoehorn in more LGBTQ++++ elemental P romances for the simple reason that you find it politically expedient. Why? Because the majority of players will not actually want that. As you yourself say, this is not the target audience in any way, shape or form. And as for it being refreshing, how about we take a gay game about gay couples and we slap in a couple of straight romances in there? Would that be weird? Yes. Yes, it would be. It would be severely unfitting. And let me just get to the end here because there's a fantastic little quote. As it stands, it feels like they've been overlooked and that the developers are offering a blanket we didn't have enough money for a lesbian statement that seems to willfully misunderstand the issue. No, no, they, they're not misunderstanding the issue. You simply have a completely different issue. Your issue is that your politics is more important than anything. And so some of the other romances simply have been yeeted out the window in favor for more LGBTQ ones. They, wanting to earn money and, un and not being ideologically possessed, reject that point of view. There is no misunderstanding here, it is simply a difference in political persuasions. Alcat implemented the romance, so it should have implemented more LGBTQ options. 
Thank you for further hammering home my point. By simply balancing the number of straight and LGBT party members to better reflect the post-gender society they inhabit. What's this now? The seventh or eighth point at which we have flagrantly ignored 40k law? No. This is not a post-gender society in any way, shape or form. This is also why I yelled quite loudly at that dumbass novel that introduces neo-pronouns in 40k for tech priests. Uh, well, tech priests have more machines than men anyway, so they shouldn't care about pronouns. No. Pronouns, as in male or female, are a part of the human race, the human species. We have two genders. Simple goddamn ass. And seeing as the entire point of the Imperium is to worship the human form, to view humanity as the superior species, to view it as the natural inheritors of the galaxy above all others, they would naturally worship every part of the human form. When a tech priest replaces his limbs with mechanical augments, it is not to make himself less human, it is to make his essence more perfect. They simply believe that an arm, for example, fingers, are less functional than mechanical implants because having fingers is not a necessary part of the human existence. Being a human, however, having a human mind, having a human persona, having human thought patterns and ideas, that is part of being a human. That does not mean that you reject gender, which is also naturally a human trait. Now, it's the natural trait in general. It also seems a little hypocritical to say that the romance must be driven by characters' needs and benefit their own personal stories, but also that these aren't stories of gay characters or straight characters. Well, no, because that's the thing, because not every human need is about their fucking genitalia. There are things that supersedes your wish to dick and or get penetrated by everything you come across. There are greater interests in life than sex. Good God. This is perhaps the single worst aspect of progressivism in total. The fact that we have reduced everything about a human being, our thoughts, our ideals, our relationship, our histories to would you like to take it in the ass? Yes or no? <sighs> and regarding terrorists can be gay as much as straight. Seneschal might not be a for relation due to his grief. Canic sexualities are part of them, and so long as romance is part of what I'm following without more trade their sexualities are important and worthy of discussion. Yeah, no, okay, fair enough, but th this thing, Seneschal is like, yeah, my sexuality is I'm a window, widower. That's my sexuality now. My wife died. That is my sexuality. Simple as. And sure, again, in my opinion, you should be able to challenge that sexuality, but it should be bloody goddamn difficult at that point. And then, the best line of all. After all, love is as much a part of life in the 44th millennium as war. You absolute blatant fucking tourist, you. You have no idea about the game you're talking about. You have no ideas about the values of RPG storytelling. You have no ideas about why the characters are the way they are. You haven't the faintest clue about what kind of a universe the 41st millennium is. And you are sitting there going, oh, well, you know, we, we're, the, we're the fans here. Yeah, we, we are the fans. That's why we're, we're about to attack you for not having enough homosexuals, because, yes, we, we, we're the fans. No, no. You are not a fan of anything. The only thing you are a fan of is your political agenda. That is the literal case, Ben Sledge. The only thing you value is your politics. The only thing you value is your sexuality. These things to you are absolute overriding factors. To the point where you believe that a character's backstory of being uh, having a dead wife, of being a widower, is less important than your desire to roger him up the tutor. This is not natural. This is not normal. You are a weird person for this. Straight up. Ironically, you have managed to get yourself into a position where even if the, the developers can make a perfectly fine argument for why this is the case, you are, your only argument is, but you seem to misunderstand me. No, they're not misunderstanding you. You have a difference in values. They wish to tell a story. You wish to ass fuck somebody. It just so happens you value that more than the story. Ay. 
This is why we can't have good things anymore. This is why we can't have good stories anymore. This is why we can't have good characters anymore. This is why we can't have good gameplay anymore. This is why Hyenas was an absolutely atrocious video game that cost CA God only knows how many millions. This is the reason why a drag queen inspired extraction shooter caused everybody's actually favorite title of Total War to increase in price and decrease in quality. Because somebody, somewhere, placed their dicks and or vaginas above the need to actually make something that might sell. Now in all due hopefulness, Alcat might learn a lesson or two from this and realize, again as we said at the beginning, the progressive's only ally is himself. You have a fundamental value uh, fundamental uh, difference in values from these people. They will never agree with you, they will never fight in your corner, and they will never purchase your video game. So, um, maybe be a bit more careful in the future where you give out your interviews. Least you'll be accused of homophobia. Preferably, stick to simply the neutral point of line and just ignore everything. Let the games speak for themselves, because your games are absolute quality. Until next time, I have an arch. Thank you very much for watching, and I do hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.